is going to be the Bazaar revision control system, not Nagios. Are you here for a Bazaar? I, I, I only take a photo. Perfect. <laughs> Photos is fine. Um, Bazaar revision control system. Um, I shouldn't have stayed up so long. Um, it's, let me start. What we are going to talk about this morning. Um, first of all, I'd like to give a short introduction to the general concept of distributed revision control. Um, some of you may be familiar with CVS or Subversion. Um, who of you uses any kind of revision control system? That's a good sign. <coughs> who of you uses a distributed revision control system? Who of you uses Git, JIT, however you might? Okay. Mercurial, anybody? Darks? Anybody using Bazaar yet? Hey, okay, a few. You might not learn anything new. This is Bazaar basics. So I'm going to give a general introduction to the terms and commands, but I'm not going to go into the very advanced details of how to use it. Um, so after giving you a short introduction about what distributed version control is about and what benefits it has, um, I give an overview about the features of Bazaar, what it Moin. Uh, what you can do with it and how it behaves. Then I'm going to give an introduction into the, the terms used in a bazaar context. Um, we have, with the other distribution revision control systems that I also mentioned, we now have quite a lot of options to choose from. Each of them serves a similar purpose but uses different terms, different commands. Some of them have slightly different f philosophies when it comes to how to handle branches or, or re um, separate revisions and things like that. So I'm going to focus on the terminology used in, in the bazaar context. Um, then I'm going to show you some typical workflows and how they apply to bazaar, how you can use it for these purposes, basic commands that you need to use and some examples. I also have a shell open so you, we can actually go down and do some practical exams if you'd like to, and then I have a few related informations and links for further information. Um, the slides do contain several links and they should be available after the session somewhere on the FrostCon website, I hope. Okay, let's dive into the topic of distributed revision control. Um, for those of you familiar with Subversion or CVS or other um, revision control systems that use a centralized instance, you have one single server somewhere that hosts your code. What you need is a direct network connection to the server to perform checkouts. If you want to like, take a look at the history of who has changed what, if you want to submit changes or want to commit anything, all of these operations require that you are directly connected to the, the central server which is a bit annoying, especially if you are traveling a lot and you do lots of coding and you have bright ideas somewhere on the airport, no internet connection and, well, you can take a pen and paper and make notes or you can hack somewhere offline, but it's not really the full workflow that you would expect and that you have available to you when you are connected to your revision control server. So in, in a distributed system, the repositories are self-hosted. That means they contain the entire code base as well as the history of the code base with all the check-in comments. You can go back in history to each revision that was before the one that you've just checked out. Um, you can make changes, you can apply them locally without having to have a direct connection to your central source control server, which is quite convenient. And they usually also allow you to create new local branches or copies of the repositories very easily and without having, again, to connect to your central server and do the checkout. So each of these repositories is basically self-hosted and can act as, as, as central repositories for others, so to say. And it makes it very easy to make changes in one repository here, other changes here, and then merge them back into a central instance again. So one of the strengths of all the systems that are currently available is that they have very good merging algorithms and they are aware of changes that have already been applied to a certain branch in, in, in another instance. So they don't 
they are not going to apply the same changes again because they are aware of them already. And as I said, you can take a look at the code, you can see diffs from other developers, you can check out the comments that they've made. All of this is available in one place. Um, of course, there's a bit of a downturn. Your repository is probably a bit larger because it remains the entire code history. Um, I work for MySQL at Sun, and we just recently switched from a proprietary distributed revision control system named BitKeeper now to Bazaar. Um, so we've been using BitKeeper for, I think, more than six years. So we have pretty much adapted to the concept of distributed revision control a long time ago. And for a very long time, BitKeeper really was the only available choice. And in the beginning, BitKeeper was a bit more liberal when it came to the usage of their clients. And um, for open source projects, they offered free hosting on bkbits.net and things like that. And the Linux kernel itself was maintained in BitKeeper for a while. But the company behind it, Bitmover.inc, owned by Larry McVoy, um, is a bit difficult to deal with, in mild words. And Larry McVoy is a pretty strong personality, and he had the BitKeeper license had pretty strict rules when it comes to um, reverse engineering the items or the, the protocol or implementing a free version of the client, things like that. Um, as far as I know, the license even doesn't allow you to work on other distributed revision control systems as long as you are a license take owner of, of a BitKeeper license. So the company at some point decided that there won't be a full version of a free client anymore. So all of a sudden, even though our MySQL source trees are publicly available, people could only create a clone and update this clone by pulling recent changes, but they were not able to um, make changes to the code base and commit changes locally or create diffs or anything like that. So we basically locked out our community from having full access to our source code, which was a bit of a pain. So we were looking for alternatives and it took a while to find the right one and there were various aspects why we chose Bazaar in the end. Um, now that MySQL is part of Sun, we, we stick a bit out of the crowd because most of the other Sun open source projects are using Mercurial by now, but the decision to use Bazaar has been made before MySQL was acquired by Sun, so that's why we will stick to it. And one particular or very important aspect is that we were able to fully migrate the source trees, including the history and all the diffs from BitKeeper to Bazaar, which was a very important thing for us. Um, we have got lots of help here, which was good. I'm going to talk about this a bit later. But another interesting aspect of distributed revision control is that there are several um, ways of how you can propagate changes from one repository to another one. Um, the, the most simple one is HTTP if you just want to have read access to a repository um, and then you can combine the tools with SSH tunneling or you can send changes and patches by email or, um, or just use several branches on a local file system that exchange that um, information with each other. Bazaar also provides um, SFTP or plain FTP as an exchange protocol. Some of the benefits, you can finally commit your stuff locally. Even if you have a subversion repository, you can check it out, you can make changes, but as soon as you want to commit these changes, you need to have write access and network access to the central server to make the change. So. Um, you end up with having a, <coughs> a local repository that has a lot of modifications that Subversion complains about, but if you do an update from the central server, there's no ch chance to make your changes sticky, so to say, and make sure that the revision control system is aware of them. Um, this is different in a distributed revision control system. You can perform um, local modifications, you can perform check-ins, and you can still pull recent updates from the central server. And you, you just have created your local branch with local modifications that are fully under revision control as if they were on the central server already, which is quite helpful. So um, there is one, well, there are several aspects where this is quite useful. Um, consider, for example, you are using some kind of um, website content management system 
which is maintained in um, Bazaar, for example. You can create a clone of the system, run it on your website, and you can make your local modifications so your website reflects how you want it to look like, and you are still able to follow the head development of, of the content management system team. So all the bug fixes, all the security improvements can still be imported into your local system and your changes will remain because they have been tracked properly. Um, it encourages experimenting. It's very easy to branch off, create a local copy with full revision control, make changes here and find out how they're doing and if the changes are worthwhile, they can be applied and merged back easily. You don't have to create a diff, apply it via patch and then commit it locally. You just need to do it once, basically. You make your changes, commit them in your one experimental branch, and then they just move automatically to the central branch or your original copy that you have created first. This also makes it easy to share your work with others. Um, it's very easy to create a branch of a project, start making changes, and then offer your local branch for this project to investigate and to, to pull the changes from you if, if they are worthwhile for them. So in, in format times, if you have worked with an open source project, you may have stumbled over a bug, you have fixed it, you sent them an email and attached a patch. Some projects are very busy, so that patch may hang around for a while until some of the, or one of the developers finally has a moment to look into it. But the main code base may have evolved already, so your patch doesn't apply cleanly anymore. Some developers then simply discard the patch because it's too much work. Others um, may go into the effort of making the changes required to make your patch apply cleanly, but you, the, the burden of applying your patch has been put on the developers. In a distributed revision control system, you can actually maintain your modifications and your patch as long or for the time being. Even if the, the central or the, the main code base, so to say, evolves and changes, you can just pull these updates from, from their repository and make sure that your patch or your modification still works fine. And so you're always on the same level of development as, this, as the head development or the main development line is. And the developers can then merge your changes easily and won't have to go through the pains of making sure that your change actually applies to the current version. So less bit rot of patches and changes. And it, of course, encourages that you start um, parallel development on new features. Um, you don't have to make check-ins into the central repository for stuff that isn't fully ready yet. It's very easy to maintain parallel lines of development. For example, if you are working on a very new and intrusive change, you can make it in a separate repository. It can evolve and improve there over time. It, at some point, the changes can be merged back. And they are already in sync, and you don't have to go through lots of um, pain or effort to make the changes work in the mainline code base. Um, maintaining local modifications, as already mentioned. And of course, well, it's faster if everything is on your local machine, going through the revision history of your code, making check-ins, all these th things usually work much faster than if you have to connect to the central server all the time. And probably also quite useful, every branch is a full backup. So if you branch from a central repository and that site goes away or dies or has a hardware failure, there are plenty of copies available that can simply be used to replace the original central copy because it's 100% copy with everything included. So a nice way to make backups, let your community create branches of your code. Okay, the tool that I'm talking about today is Bazaar. <coughs> Written in Python, um, it's maintained by Canonical, the company behind the Ubuntu Linux distribution and the Launchpad open source project site. Um, it's been around for quite a while, has evolved for a while. It, one of the benefits that it has in comparison to the other tools available is that it supports several varieties of workflows. You can actually use Bazaar in the same way that you would use Subversion, that you have one Bazaar server that acts as a central repository. 
and commits are always done on the central repository, not on your local copy. So this is very convenient. If you have subversion developers that are used to this kind of workflow, you can easily migrate because the concept can, or it can be configured to be high, behave exactly like that. But you can always switch to a um, disconnected mode or can convert the whole process into fully distributed. So it's up to you what workflow you prefer and what your developers are used to. Um, and the interesting aspect is that if you are working on a large code base, but you have very, or a lot of parallel go ongoing developments, um, you don't have to create a full copy of the branch every time. What you can set up is a so-called um, shared repository. This is basically a container that can include several repositories that share a lot of the changes and have a, a common history, but then at some point started to diverge because you have, are working on separate features. And in, in that case, Bazaar is capable of saving space and and also improving the performance by using a shared repository where most of the information that is common to all of these other repositories is, is shared. Well, that's the name. What I like is that Bazaar doesn't clutter my source tree with lots of strange files or directories. There's one single hidden directory .bzr in the root of my repository. This is what contains all the changes and all the other directories don't have a hint or a trace of Bazaar anywhere. It supports a wide variety of protocols that you can use to exchange the information. Um, as I said, you can use it via SSH, SFTP, FTP, HTTP. Email is also possible, so you can use um, asynchronous ways to, to exchange information. Say again? Uh, of course, it is a protocol of its own. The way the, the ex information is exchanged is a big uh, Bazaar specific protocol. But interestingly, Bazaar can also speak subversion. There is a plugin that allows you to connect a central subversion server and pr perform a checkout and work on it locally as if it were a Bazaar repository. And you can make commits locally and then submit them back to the central subversion server. That's also possible. That's uh, one of the other highlights. Bazaar is very flexible and expandable because it is highly modular and has a very um, advanced plugin system. Um, it's, it's written in Python, so writing plugins is pretty straightforward. There's quite a number of plugins available already, and it's, it's very flexible. You have hooks that you can call, and you can perform arbitrary activities at various stages of the, the commit or the push process. Um, by default, it is just a command line tool, but there are various plugins that implement graphical user interfaces. So if you want to look at diffs, you have graphical diff tools. If you want to commit, there is a GUI. If you want to look at the history of your code, you have a, a tool that displays the lines of code when they have been merged with the commits and everything. So it, it's very flexible. Also very nice is that for most of the commands, you have several aliases aliases, however you pronounce it, that makes it more accessible to developers that come from other revision control systems. So if you are uh, a subversion user, you will immediately feel at home because the commands are the same. And if one of the commands doesn't fit your requirements, you can create your own aliases to certain commands. So similar to a shell, you can make modifications to rename commands. and. For most built-in commands, if you look at the documentation and the help, you will see that they already have a, f a set of predefined alternatives that you can use to perform the same action. So very flexible, and the focus on Bazaar really is on the, on the user experience and the ease of use. They have tried to come up with a, a very um, concise and transparent way of working, and it, it tries to stay out of your way. It's, it's a very helpful tool, but the, uh, they try to make the, the learning curve as, as low as possible. So you have, don't have to learn tons of new commands, and each operation requires subtle differences in how you call the command. It's usually very easy. I think I have an example of how the command line is built up and what the basic commands are. OK, let's get into the terminology of Bazaar. 
the first thing you want to learn about is what a revision in Vazar is. A revision basically is a snapshot of your whole source code base at a certain point in time. So changes that you have made, um, the comments that you have made, um, the history, changes that have been before, they all are being snapshotted and can get a, a certain revision ID that is unique. You can tag those revisions similar to how you work in subversion, you commit something, <laughs> then you can label it with a, a certain string that identifies the change that you've made. Um, by default, Bazaar only supports adding one comment to the entire revision. That means if you have made modifications to a lot of files, you have one comment field where you can make your notes about what changes you have applied here. Um, in BitKeeper, we got used to the system that you can actually add additional notes to each single file that is included in, in a revision, which makes it a bit more easier to really document for each file what the changes were that you have made. And then you just have one additional summary comment, so to say, that, that sums up everything that you've changed in, in that revision. And help, hope uh, the Bazaar folks were kind enough to actually implement this functionality. So future versions of Bazaar will also be able to support per file comments, which is quite neat if you're used to it. Um, those revisions are then being yeah, they, you can export them in, in, a, in a single file, which can be sent by email and applied to a different revision, con uh, different branch, <coughs> or they can be interchanged with other branches. So a revision is basically a change set of modifications that put your code base from point A to point B. Another term that you hear in Bazaar is a working tree, which this is the directory where your code is, lives, all files are checked out, you can modify them. This is the source tree that you work in where you make your changes and which contains the hidden .bzr directory that contains all the history of your, of your um, repository. Working trees are the, the usual, usual way of, of working with Bazaar, <coughs> but it's also possible to create um, repositories that are basically empty. You have a directory and nothing in it except for the .bzr directory, which is usually how you would set up a, a central Bazaar server because people are not supposed to edit files on the central repository anyway, so you don't have to have them lying around. It saves a bit of disk space. Branch. This is the way of how Bazaar names a, a full set of changes. So everything, every uh, revision that you apply is part of a branch. Um, they are, um, revisions have a certain history in which they are aligned after each other and branches contain all these revisions. And you can clone them. You can, branching or cloning is basically the same term, which means you create an identical copy of a repository, either on your local file system or via the network. And in a branch, you make a changes, you commit your revision, and you can then propagate it to another branch. Alternatively, as I said, a branch can be checked out. In that case, it, it behaves similarly to subversion. If you check out a branch and you make changes that you want to commit, they're immediately being sent back to the central repository. And the repository stores revisions. And by default, as I said, each repository contains the entire history. If you want to save space, you set up a shared repository that contains several of your branches, if they have the same history. This is the general syntax of Bazaar. BZR is the only command that you need. <clears throat> and then you have various subcommands that then require several options or arguments depending on which command you are calling. Each of them is documented, so you can run BZR help, you can run BZR help command, and you will get a list of the available options and what this command actually does. You can take a look at this on the command line.
So Visual help would give me the general help with the basic commands that I need. If I want to learn more, I can run BZR help commands and then I get the full range of commands, which is a bit longer than that, which really gives me every single command that is available. And as you can see, some of these commands actually come from plugins that I've installed. So plugins provide additional commands that are then be made, are made part of the list. Yep, we just talked about that. In addition to just giving you general help on what each individual command does, BCR help topics will also explain more of the general topics of how Bazaar works, what the workflow looks like, the terminology, what kind of different protocols that you could use. All of this is also explained in, in separate documents that are part of the Bazaar binary. And then, of course, you have a website and lots of tutorials that you can look into. The links will be provided at the end of the talk. Okay, let's take a look at a first example of how you could actually use Bazaar if you are a single developer working on your own project. So you start with an idea, you create your code, you create the directory structure, you add the files, you have an existing structure or whatever, and this is what you want to convert into a bazaar branch. So you have a directory structure, <clears throat> you create your repository and you start hacking on it and you commit changes locally. Um, just in your own single repository. So you can look back what you have done one month ago. You can tag your branches that you, are, that you have worked on or if you have made a new release you can mark this in the revision control system. Um, you can look at diffs, you can incorporate patches from others. All this can be done on a single instance of your repository. You don't have to set up, like, inf of course you can use subversion locally as well, but you will always end up with two directories. You have one directory that is the subversion repository, and then you have a directory that contains your checked out copy. In Bazaar, this is all self-contained in one directory, so you can hack in the same directory that also contains the, the repository itself, which is what we call a working tree. And well, yeah, at some point you package your release and you continue making new changes and so on. So this is the basic way of working with Bazaar. Hello. Yeah. Also quite helpful, if you are a system administrator, you have a slash etc directory Putting it under Bazaar control can be quite helpful to memorize why you changed etc, inetd.conf, or whatever. So even for this kind of purposes, it's quite, quite helpful to use a revision control system. It's not only suitable for maintaining code. OK, here are the commands that you use for this single workflow. The first one is bzr init. This creates the the branch and initializes the repository to make sure that Bazaar is able to track your changes. Um, you can either start from scratch, bzr init, directory name. If the directory doesn't exist yet, it will be created. If it does exist, Bazaar simply adds the .bzr directory and initializes itself in there. I, was, I wanted to give you a little demo of that, so let's go back to the shell. Okay, bzr init, test project. Whoop, that was fast. Okay, so you see there's now a directory test project. Oops. And if I look at it, all I see is the .bzr directory, which contains the basic repository. So, what's next? Adding files, modifying files, working with files. I'm also going to give a little demo of that. So um, I'm going to cheat and use a, a file that's already available. Okay, I've now 
added a file to my directory, but it's not yet under revision control. Bazaar doesn't know about it. For this, I have to use the command bzr add. All right. And it dutifully reports that it has now started to track changes that I've made to the host file. Hi. Nothing has changed. It's still there. We could add another file. Let's see, what can we do? Uh, let's take KD3RC. Yep, you're right. Thank you. In the same way, I could also add complete directories. So if I have a directory that includes many files or many subdirectories, BZR add directory name would simply recurse the entire tree and add all the files that it finds in there. Bazaar is also capable of um, tracking changes of directories and directory names and symbolic links as well. So you basically have a full directory structure under control and you can also move directories, including subdirectories, and the changes will be tracked and you don't lose the history. Yeah? When I add a directory, will, will it uh, in the future detect automatically when I add a new file to that directory? Uh, or will I still have to uh, execute add file? You will still have to execute add file. The BZR add <coughs> goes, recurses the directory once, all the files, but if you add a file later, you'll have to manually add it, regardless on where it's located in your, in your working tree. Yes, you can move a file. You have to use bazaar move to move the file, but <coughs> yeah. Can I add a directory without including all files in the directory? Yes. Because currently by a source and object code, I don't mm -hmm. have the object code and the bazaar control. Right. Um, yes, you can use, I think you can even use wildcards. Whoa, okay, you have lots. <laughs> so you have no recourse. You can also use dry run in most commands, which is quite helpful, so you can kind of test what it would be doing without actually executing it. Um, recursive mode is the default, treat it the same way, blah. You can use wildcards on the shell, for example. BZR add star dot C would only add the C code. That's possible. Okay, so we now have lots of files. They have been added. And the first thing that I would probably do now is commit the first state of my file. So bzr commit. And it has noted, okay, you added two new files. And, well, I'm going to add this as a command. And I commit my first change. OK, that note here is from a plugin that I have installed, which is for our internal MySQL server development. You can ignore that message. But we now have committed our first revision. And like in subversion, BZR log will give me the history. <coughs> so branch nick is the name of my branch when the change was made and the message. Um, the revisions that Bazaar uses are easy to read. If you look at how Git, for example, numbers revisions or change sets are how they're called there, it's a long hash string, which I find a bit um, unintuitive. And Bazaar internally uses a, a more complex number as well. But for by default, the, the revision number that you see is pretty easy readable. Okay, let's see. We have bizarre diff. How can we trigger that? Let's make a change. Okay, make an arbitrary change. And if I ask Biza, hey, what has changed? It will tell me, hey, you modified hosts and you added one line. Okay, fine. Let me commit that change. Chip. 
and we committed revision number two. If I look at the history, I see, now see the next message added. So this is all locally, very unintrusive, can be done with every directory where you make changes. Um, it can be binary files as well. Bazaar is pretty effective for binary formats as well. But then for, uh, if you use binaries, you can't diff them. But it will tell you that they have changed. <coughs> You can locate it outside if you create a shared repository. In that case, you have a central directory with a .bzr directory, and all the branches that are located in the shared directory don't have an additional .bzr directory. Yes, <clears throat> um, the diff command accepts revision strings. So you can say, show me the diff from revision x to re revision z, for example. Okay, we already did that. BZR commit is the command line tool. Oh, I could actually take a look at a graphical plugin. There's a, a GTK front end and one written in Qt. So you have, if you are KDE guy, you might want to use the Qt front end. They both look a bit different. But the nice thing is you have choice and you can use whatever you prefer. I think I've installed them both, so let's take a look at how they look. Yeah. Just some random change. Use the graphical commit tool. This is a bit more friendly. You see the diff of changes that you've done, a list of files that you have made, and you can then enter your commit message down here. And as you can see, this is already the version that allows you to perform a per file commit in addition to the global commit. And then, well, easy as that commit your change. Um, you don't always have to commit all the changes. If you use BZR commit and a list of files, you can create a revision that only contains the files that you've listed. So you're not forced to always commit everything that you've changed in your repository. And well, if you're curious, we could look at the Qt version as well. So this one looks a bit different. Here you actually don't see the diff of changes, but you could use this field, which is quite nice and is also a feature of Bazaar. If you have a bug tracking system that is connected to Bazaar with hooks, and if, if you enter the bug ID here, Bazaar is capable of firing a trigger that will then update the state of your bug report in your bug tracking system. Bazaar, by default, supports um, Bugzilla, and tracks as far as I know, but there are plugins for others uh, available as well. So this is also a, a very nice integration into the workflow. If you have several developers working on, on various bugs, they just enter the bug ID here, and the, the bug reporting system will keep track of who made which bug fix. It's quite nice. All right, we looked at the log file already, we looked how a diff would look like. As I said, diffs could, be, could not only be made on changes that I've done locally that have to be committed yet, but diffs could also be done by comparing two revisions that have already been committed. Another nice command that I would like to show is BZR Visualize. Um, I think I have a screenshot here this time. This is a very busy tree, as you can see. This is one of our MySQL server. It's MySQL 5.1. And you can see that at some point in time, you have yeah, eight 
um, branches that have been developed in parallel and then have been merged back into each other at, at certain points of time. So each individual has been working on his separate branch where he made a, a particular change and at some point it has been moved or merged back into another revision. We, we really have lots of staging areas, so to say, and probably several hundreds, if not thousands, of repositories that our developers are working on it, that at some point are being merged together and then trickle up until they finally reach the main repository. Um, we have teams that have their own team branches in which they make changes. So the members of the team initially check out or branch from the team tree, make the changes, push the changes back into the team branch and until the team branch has passed all the tests and all the revision and has been approved. This team branch then gets merged into the main line without actually having to mail patches or anything. Yeah. No, not at all. The no, workflow. I mean, in, in, inside the company, the way, uh, so. No, not at all. This is the similar workflow that we have been using with Bitkeeper and that we have been, well, used to and 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 fond of. But we really overdo it when it comes to maintaining branches and the way, or the the massive amount of merges that we're actually performing is something that the bazaar developers haven't seen before. So we, we discovered a few interesting issues with Bazaar that were only triggered because of the sheer amount of parallel ongoing developments that are being merged at some point. Not that many actually. We had um, more critical problems with BitKeeper from time to time, but the support from Bitmover was always very outstanding. That's something I really have to say. Um, even though I, I, as an open source developer, I don't really like how the company behaves and how community unfriendly BitKeeper is, but as, an, as a developer, it's, it's a very excellent tool. And it had many of the features and uh, the capabilities that are just yet appearing in, in the prominent distributed open source revision control systems. So it, it has its merits, but now there are several alternatives available as open source. I don't really see the need anymore of recommending BitKeeper for teams that would like to work in such an environment. Um, and as I said, the nice thing is changes just travel from one repository to the next. You don't have to manually apply the changes. But of course, if, if there's a conflict, you have to resolve it. And Bazaar is pretty good in, in merging changes that don't include collisions. But if, if there is a conflict, you have to resolve it manually and then recommit the merged change. Um, this is in comparison to, or let me rephrase it. Um, if you merge changes from another tree into your local tree, you will always have to do a review and commit the changes that you've merged. Other tools, if you merge from a tree, they also do an auto commit if, if the merge was successful in, in theory because all the changes applied without conflict. But Bazaar is a bit more cautious and says, even though I was able to um, apply all the changes from the separate repository, you may want to look at what I've done and then you really explicitly do the commit and kind of approve the changes that were made automatically. Okay, so developer A has been hacking on his repository. Why does that pull and merge stand in there? That must be an old version of the slides. Okay, never mind. So developer A has been working on his repository and has now a new team member that is going to help him. So that's the workflow that we had before. Create repository, hack, commit, and then we have developer B. And yep, he creates a branch by pulling the entire code base and the history of developer A on his local machine. He starts making changes. He commits them locally. Oh man, imagine there would be an arrow pointing to the same thing. Oh, it's completely messed up, I'm sorry. Oh, open office, I hate you. <laughs> okay, never mind. <clears throat> 
I guess the, the, the concept is clear. Developer B has a, a full, complete copy of the tree. He can make his changes locally. He can work on them. Developer A can pull the changes at any time and can review the changes that have been done. And this can be done in both directions because Bazaar notes what has been changed and applied already and it won't apply the changes again. So they are always both on the same line of code and can make or can look at the same state of the code base and can review each other's changes easily. So pair programming is made pretty easy in that respect. And yeah? In order to pull, what do I need? Um, network access to the remote repository in, in any way. Either. Yes. You can either provide it by HTTP. He could create a tarball of the entire repository that he could send to you by email, for example. They, you could allow SSH access, SFTP, various methods of how to make access to the repository. Do you need a web server? A web server is the easiest way. And then the developer A would publish his repository on his website. Or you could use a service like Launchpad that provides free bazaar hosting. So you can just commit your or push your changes to the central bazaar repository and the other developer can branch from there. And the branch is the command that you use to create a copy that is, where am I? So they can control to, to the repository and to the uh, to the, um, to the transport. To the transport. Exactly. Okay. Yep. The bazaar by itself does not provide any kind of access control. So, branch, that can be done locally on a file system as well. So, okay, I have my test project and I now think, hey, I need to make a change. BZR branch, um, test project, test project work. So, now I have two separate directories and I can go in, oops, into this one and it's, co it's a complete copy containing the history and everything. This is right still an identical copy and I can now make changes here. <coughs> BZR commit. And if I look at the history for this repository now, I have a new entry that notes my change. If I go back to the main repository, nothing has changed yet. So they are completely disconnected, but I can of course merge the changes back. So I can use BZR pull, test project work, and it tells me what files have been modified on the remote side and it applied the changes and I'm now on the same revision. If I look at the log file now, I see the change that has been done in the separate repository. If I have made modifications in my local repository, <coughs> so if I have, Bazaar notices that they both have the same ancestry and all the revisions are the same except for the head. Those are the only changes have been made on the, repo on the remote side. If I had committed a local change on the other repository, it would tell me that they have diverged and that I would have to perform a merge instead of a pull. Good point. What happens to the revision numbers when you would have uh, done revisions on the first mm -hmm. branch actually? Because now it just... Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Please RCI. Add a test. Ah, there you go. Actually, it it asks you to apply the modifications here. Yeah, I was wrong. It, it merged them and it said, okay, I was able to pull them, but you still have to commit them here. My fault. So, I'm confused. Okay, so we made a change here. Let's go back to the other side. commit the change here. That's also a nice command. I'm going to show you BZR status. 
nothing has changed here. And if I say BZR missing, it tells me, hey, we were missing one revision because the other side has added another file and I've made a change that hasn't been applied on the remote side, which is the added test file that I've added locally. So if I look at the log here, I have revision number five, edit test, and on the working copy, I also have a revision number five, edit another file. So let's see what's happened when I merge these together now. Aha, now it notices, hey, you've made a change and committed it already. <clears throat> Something needs to change. So I have to use BZR merge instead of just pull the changes. And it happily confirms that the changes have been made and I now have to commit them. And I'm running out of time. Okay, BZR log. Let's see what happened. As you can see, the revision numbers then <coughs> get an additional number to it. So it, it, it changes the revision number after the merge. <coughs> and we can visualize those changes. Here you see when I branched off and the changes that I've made and when I have merged back into the main tree. <coughs> yes, that's, I think that's the GTK plugin that provides this command. Not fixed. They are only for those, th <coughs> only for those that are part in, in both repositories. So, but if, <clears throat> as you can see down here, there is another revision ID down here, which is combined out of a uh, timestamp and uh, the, the committer ID and a unique ID. And these remain unique even across repositories. Okay, let me fly through the rest of my slides. BZR push. <clears throat> I just used pull to uh, kind of grab changes from a remote repository. If I do have write access to another one, I can push the changes to it as well. So it, it can, the, the, the transport of changes can be initiated from both sides of the repositories. BZR send is basically a tool to send changes by email. Um, and it doesn't only include a read, readable version of the patch for you to review, but it also contains an encoded version of the bazaar change set that can be automatically applied. So it's not like you end up with a patch that you have to apply manually and commit. BZR can simply import the whole ch revision without any manual interaction. Pull and merge was already talked about. This is an example for a centralized workflow. So developer A checks out. Uh, I hate OpenOffice. He makes changes and commits, and he updates again. So in that case, it's always been the commits are being done on the central repository, similar to how subversion works. I've mentioned that before. And you can have more complex systems. This is a system where the central repository is kind of protected by a gatekeeper that accepts all the modifications that are being made by the various team members and reviews and tests them before he commits them into the central branch, which is the source for all other developers. So they can really be sure that the code that they pull from the central repository is always tested and passes all the regression tests and has been reviewed and is a safe code base to work on. And this gatekeeper could either be an individual or an automated system that performs test runs by itself. How much more time do I have? Okay, I am going to run through this. I guess you get the gist. Hey, there we go. <laughs> um, main page of the project, it's, it's a wiki. You can edit it, you can add your own experiences or comments. 
Bundle Buggy is a nice tool that allows you to perform code reviews, so you can submit your branches there, others can take a look at it, make comments on the changes that you've made. Patch queue management is an automated tool with Bazaar support that accepts pushes and then each time a push has been made performs an arbitrary action on the code base like doing a test compile, running the test suite and anything and once certain criteria have been met, the tests have passed, it still compiles, PQM can then push the changes to another repository or perform another action or if it doesn't work it will yell at the developer, send an email or update a web page with a fail status, things like that. Fully integrated with Bazaar. If you are looking for a free project hosting site that supports Bazaar, um, I would recommend Launchpad, also maintained by Canonical. All the MySQL server source trees are now publicly available from there. The nice thing about Launchpad is that it also provides a bug tracking system that is then connected with Bazaar. So as I said, if you add a command, fix bug ID XYZ, um, Launchpad will automatically make use of these changes and update the bug reports ac accordingly. There's an IRC channel on Freenode where the Bazaar hackers hang out. Um, if you plan to use Bazaar in your company and you want to have commercial support, Canonical does provide this for a fee as well. And I'm done. I apologize. I must have somehow used an older version of my slides. But I hope it was kind of useful nevertheless. Any comments, questions? Yes. Yes. Yes, sure. Um, the, the subversion plugin allows you to connect to a subversion server as if it were a remote bazaar repository and it goes in both directions. So you can commit your changes back to the subversion server. Um, if you are convinced, there is a tool called SVN2Bazaar that simply converts a given subversion repository into a bazaar repository by providing the entire history and all the changes. That's what I did with the project of mine. It worked very nicely. Uh, how does uh, Bazaar perform for projects with like 30,000 permissions? Very well. Um, the MySQL code base is fairly large and has evolved quite significantly. Um, and it was one of the test beds that the Bazaar developer used for making tons of improvement when it comes to performance. Um, they have just recently done benchmarks against all the other available revision control systems and it's now up to par to the other. So the size doesn't really matter that much. And also the amount of files. Um, that's, that's, in former times, Bazaar was always being kind of, it's nice but slow and the Git is fast, but if you want to use it, you really have to study for a long time until you've grasped the concepts behind it. Um, nowadays, it's really hard to choose. I, if I see, or as I see it, if you're looking from changing to subversion to something decentralized, you have three options, which is Git, Mercurial, and Bazaar. Those are the three that you should take a look at. My personal favorite really has become Bazaar in the meanwhile, because it's so easy to use, it just works, gets out of the way, and it's easily ex extendable. Yeah. You can also perform a so-called lightweight checkout, which ignores the history and only has the source code, so to say. And then you just have, you can still commit in everything and you don't have the baggage of the entire history. Or, as I said, if you want to save space, if you work on a fairly large project and you have multiple local branches, you create a shared repository, which is also possible if you pull a repository from remote. You, don't, uh, you, you can use a shared repository for both stuff that you've all only created locally or things that you have pulled from, from a remote repository, both is possible. Anything else? When I have a bunch of developers having their local repository, yeah. do I have to pull from all the others? Or how does it work? How do, uh, does everybody get all changes without having a central repository? If you don't have a central repository, you of course have to make sure that your developers exchange their revisions by themselves, by either pushing or pulling from the others. So and if you have a team of developers, 
I would agree, yes. Um, that's the basic workflow. You have a, a central repository that has the main line. And, well, each developer has his local copy. If he needs to work with others, it probably makes sense that he also creates a separate repository that he pushes his changes to from time to time so his team members can pull them from there and stay in sync. There are several workflows are possible. If all the developers just have their local branches, you require communication between them to make sure that they exchange their, their work with each other. So in a team, you, you usually have a central repository, but they still, even though there is a central repository, developer A can then just point to developer B's repository and take some of the changes from him that haven't gone through the central repository yet. But at some point, if developer B pushes these changes and developer A pushes other changes plus the ones that develop, he already got from developer B, Bazaar will notice that and won't apply them again, so there won't be a conflict. Yeah? Uh, how does it scale? Applying a label is BZR tag and, and the string that you want to apply. If you mean a tag, what, what do you mean by a label? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Um, in, in Subversion, what you would do is that you check out a partial copy of the repository. So Subversion allows you to kind of dive into a directory and just grab a subdirectory with all the changes. This is not possible with Bazaar. You always get a full repository with everything included. Um, you would have to modify your workflow, and you would start having one repository per module, where just changes to this module are being made, and you have one central main instance and they can, you can then decide, okay, this module has evolved and matured enough, I'm going to pull these changes into my main repository or from the other one. So it, it's a matter of how you set up your workflow and how you structure your repositories. But it, it could basically be used for this as well. Um, sorry, I have to stop. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry.